Good day. We are on day 25 of an amazing journey together that we've shared. Um, shared our faith, come together in faith to worship a God that loves to see us use our faith. Um, a powerful God, an awesome God um, who has nothing but good for us and uh, nothing but good things in our lives. So today's going to be very special. I'm not sure um, if you were with us yesterday on, on the journey, uh, but today's going to be a little bit special. It's going to be something that uh, we've never uh, probably done before. Um, but we are going to take communion together. And there's, and if, by far, and I hope that um, by the end of this session, you're going to truly kind of be blessed. I know you'll be blessed. I promise and I know you'll be blessed. Um, but what I want you to do is very quickly, if you, if you don't already, I want you to just quickly grab a little piece of bread. It doesn't have to be anything special. It could be a piece of bread um, and a small cup of juice. It doesn't matter if you don't have uh, the elements, but just, you know, go into your kitchen, get bread, a little bit of juice. If you don't have juice, um, you know, a little bit of water if you want as well. But uh, I always use grape juice if you want. But we'll do something really special today. We'll talk about, we've been on such a good journey. And uh, like I said, for those of you who uh, aren't Christians or believers or Catholics or, you know, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I want you to feel welcome here. I want you to know that we're trusting God uh, through every one of these sessions while the world is in panic while the world is um, going through so much and so much pain and depression and the rest, we're gonna look to a good God and have faith in Him and, and claim His promises over our lives. Um, this is never about the about motivational speaking. It's never about that, uh, but it's about, it's about trans transformation, heart transformation, looking at relationship with a good God, resting in His love for us, resting in what He's done and never about what we want. So there's never about, um, God doesn't is not interested about how we worship Him. That's never the case, especially not after the cross, especially not after He made a way for us. So over the last few days, um, it's been, hopefully you've really been blessed through these sessions, but over the last few days, we're talking about Jesus. Uh, we talked about Him as being the bread of life. We talked about Him being the perfect, sinless Lamb of God who came uh, to take away all our sin and made a way for us completely to be near to God. So today we're going to kick off right away and I'm going to start with um, John 6, 51 to 58 and I'm, and I'm going to rush through it. But Jesus makes a very bold claim here. So you imagine the, the King of Kings, you know, uh, the one and only Son of God standing and, and, and saying this. And he said, and, and, and people were listening to him and there were crowds gathered. And he said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He makes a bold statement. He says, and we've talked about this, so you need to get the last few messages just to make sure that you know where we're going today. He said, anyone, anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I offer the world, that the world may live, truly live. And we talked about how, you know, there's, there's life, but there's the, the breath of God and there's a life of God that God came to give us. He said, that is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other because he's made a bold claim. He says, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And they started making it. It's typical of the world, right? When the world doesn't understand, um, hey, let's be patient. Let's share with love. If, if you want the world to know Jesus more, you know, take a moment to share what he means. And we're going to do that right now. Uh, so people around him were freaked out. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said again, I'm telling you the truth, unless you eat, the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink His blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person on the last day. That's big. That's bold. Don't miss that. For my flesh is food indeed. Okay? Um, let's get a little bit closer here. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He's saying, I'm actually going to relate now to bread and, and wine to a body and to the blood. You have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. So there's there's a lot of power when we're talking about this. It's a very powerful meal. Now we'll find out why. He says, anyone, anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me. The word is abides in me. And we and some, sometimes, um, so we've talked about Jesus saying, abide in me and I in you. Now he's telling you how. It's incredible, right? Uh, sometimes this can all be just language to us, but when he tells us, how do you, how do we abide in you, Jesus? And what abide means is 
remain? How do we keep ourselves in the love of God? How do we remain in Him? He's telling you right now, anybody who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. And in the same way, anyone who feeds on me food and drink, feeds on me, will live because of me. Love that. I'm the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die, but will live forever. This is a massive, massive promise. And, and, um, and you know, if you're here on this journey, keep listening. There's so much to share with you. Uh, but of course, people were freaked out. But again, now, if you've been on the journey of the last few days, you'll know that Jesus is also referring to him as the, of him, to, to himself as the Lamb of God. He came down to be the offering for us. Now, let's go rewind to Exodus 12, 1 to 5. And we're going to be doing a few incredible events that will teach us exactly what we're doing here when we come for communion to the Lord's table. When the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, now this is, uh, this is a very, very important time because this is a period where God is rescuing his chosen people. Today, you and I are those chosen people, all right? This is how God looks after his people. God is here looking after his chosen people still in the land of Egypt, so still in slavery. Uh, if you think about it, Egypt there, in that sense is a picture of the world it's it's the, the world still is full of stress and still is full and sometimes if you think about it the world holds us captive it doesn't allow us to get into god's word it doesn't it distracts us so in a, in a way it's a type of that right i'm just asking you to think about the parallels when the israelites were still in the land of egypt the lord gave the following instructions and this is and now um a number of plagues have passed. Nine plagues have passed. And this is the final one. God is going to do something mighty here to get his people out of the land. And you, do, you know this story well, but let's zoom in on a couple of things that happened night, that night very, very specifically. He says, from now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family will choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. We've talked about the significance of that. Jesus came to be the perfect lamb for us. Listen to this. Um, one animal for each household. One animal for the whole house. When you're partaking in faith, your whole house will be saved. Remember that. If the family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family. When you take, you can, take, uh, you can partake thinking about other families in different parts of the world today. Let's really keep this real. Divide the animal uh, according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. See, it's, I love this because it's, it's never about is the lamb enough for the family. The lamb is always enough. The same lamb cannot just provide for your family, but another family and another family. It never says is the lamb not enough. It says you can invite another family and another family. You can think about other families and, and, and your families all over the world when you partake for them. Um, the animal you select must be um, a one-year-old male, either sheep or, sheep or goat with no defects. Very important. Remember, with no defects, Jesus came as the perfect lamb. He had no defects. He had no sin. He couldn't. He couldn't have sin because his sinless blood had to be shed for you. Very powerful. We're going to zone in on that blood now. Okay. Don't miss this. Wherever you are in the world, don't miss this one. Um, let's keep, let's zoom in a little bit more. He says, Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter that lamb or goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and top of the door frames of the house. I'm going to say that again so you don't miss it. On the sides, go, picture yourself standing outside the door of your house right now and picture yourself listening to God's instructions and smearing, right? Picture it, right? picture you in that in that day on the sides and the top do you get that what do you see you see the cross um, make sure you cover your door with that blood right and um, on the side and on the top of the door frames that same night roast the meat over a fire and then eat it with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast roast the animal Jesus had to be burnt. He had to be roasted at the cross. He, he carried because, because roast here and the fire is a picture of God's judgment. God had to judge you, your sins, my friend. 
Make no mistake, when you receive Jesus as your perfect lamb, remember we talked about this, and you brought that lamb with you, the lamb had to be killed. Yes, the blood had to be sprinkled. Remember, the blood had to be sprinkled on the doorpost to give you access, to give you entry, to show God that an innocent lamb had died. And this is just the way God meant for us to come to him, my friends. This is just, um, you know, because God is showing the world that sin is serious. You know, think, um, innocent blood must be shed because sin is serious. Let's never, never, um, let's never just ignore that. So, uh, and then don't forget, because he was carrying the sins, not just our sins and, and your neighbor's sins, but the sins of all the world. Imagine that pain. Imagine the excruciating pain at the cross. And we know what he went through. We talked about it over the last few days. And that's a picture of God's judgment falling on him, burning him for all the sins of the world at that cross. You cannot imagine, my friends, what he went through for you. Um, listen, let's just zone a little bit more here. So it says, roast the meat over fire and then eat it. The whole animal, including the head, the legs, and the internal organs must be roasted over a fire. When you listen to words like this, don't skip through. It says Jesus paid for the healing in your head. He paid for the healing in your legs. He paid for the healing of your internal organs. His body was carrying your sin and that body faced the judgment of God so that you could be completely healed in your head, in your legs, in your internal organs. Don't miss that. This is a teaching that I hope you will never forget, but you will carry it with you. And if you need to listen to it twice or thrice or four times, go ahead, but never, but don't miss it. God has got amazing things in this teaching for you. And then, and then he says, okay, so they, so they put the blood on the, on the doorpost, they roast the lamb, they eat the lamb. Good, good, we're gonna do that at the end. And then it says, these are your instructions for eating the meal. Be fully dressed. That means get ready. Get ready to move. Get ready to carry your stick in your hand and walk. It means you're going to come out of slavery exactly after you eat. You're going to come out of slavery that next morning. Now listen to what happens that night. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt. And he says, eat the meal with urgency for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. So God has essentially now put a curse, all right? Um, and, and put and in, 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 in assigned the angel of death to pass through that land and execute death. But guess what happens? I, but the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You see, there is a sentence in the world. There is a sentence. God has to judge. God had judged from the beginning. God has to judge sin. So there is a sentence, but the sentence is not allowed to touch you. Death and destruction is not allowed to touch you because you are in the house. You are in the house covered by his blood. Remember that. Um, and I hope that, I, that we're drawing parallels here for you. And I hope you're getting it. Um, this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Do we have a plague right now, a plague of death in, in, in the world? Let's trust the things of God. God has given us an incredible meal to come close to him, a way to come close to him. Let's trust him and let's do things his way. Um, and, 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 and then, and of course that part, and let's quickly finish that off. Exodus 12, 23, I'm, I'm continuing that same story. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe, the Lord will pass over. And that's what's called a Passover. The Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. The next morning, the, uh, the Bible tells us the children of Israel walked out. And do you know how they walked out? The Bible tells us they walked out with not one person feeble. Not one person was sick. And the Bible tells us there was probably about two to three million of them. It wasn't a small amount of people, my friend. But two to three million took the roasted lamb, sp uh, put the blood on the doorpost, ate the roasted lamb, drank, and then walked out. And then walked out. And they walked out. 
with none feeble. No sickness came next to them. No one died that night. In Egypt, a death in every single house. It says there were screams um, at night or in the morning, just screams and screams heard. Not one, the, but, the, but the death, the plague of death was not allowed, was not allowed to touch the children of God. All right, that's, uh, hopefully that's really, really um, stayed with you. Let's talk about it a little bit more. So let's zoom into the New Testament and let's talk about how Jesus describes uh, communion. He says, for I pass on to you what I received. Um, well, actually, this is, this is Luke 22, 19 to 20. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body, which is given for you. And the disciples got it. And the disciples got it because they, they knew there they saw the Lamb of God given. There they saw the Lamb of God standing in front of them and saying, this is my body. I'm giving it for you. Uh, and then do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. See, God respects the blood because when um, and, and, and you'll see this if you read the Old Testament now that we've talked about sacrifice and the lambs and the blood don't ever be freaked out by this these are things that um, that you know the world would have you say oh my gosh really I don't really I know I can't don't believe in the killing of animals etc we don't have to kill any animals which is great news right we, we're not doing that and we're not thinking about that at all but those were a picture of what was to come today we don't need to kill an animal no one's ever saying you do that, but you do need to do things God's way. You do need to, and, and, and remember, what we're doing here is not um, saying that we keep repeating it. We don't have, Christ died once, um, and the Bible tells us there's one sacrifice forever paid for all sin, for all time, okay? This is, a sacri this is God himself who came down and, 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 and went to the cross for you, carrying your sins, taking all your sickness, taking all your pain, one sacrifice for all time. And, and the Bible tells us that actually. It says, um, it says back then they had to keep sacrificing animals to cover their sin. But this one man or the Son of God had one time to make this one sacrifice and that's it. But what we do every time we partake is we do this in memory of Him. We did this in memory of what He did. Now let's quickly talk about why we do it, okay? So um, in Corinthians, Paul speaks about the Holy Communion again, but he got this revelation from the Lord himself. And, and listen to this. He says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given, given for you. Okay? Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper and says, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it, as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. You are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. Um, so, so there's something extremely powerful that happens when we're proclaiming the Lord's death. If we realize it or not, when we're proclaiming the Lord's death, it's like we're speaking the blood on our doorposts all over again. It's like we're it's like we're partaking of the roasted lamb all over again and saying, "I am receiving. I receive what you did for me." Um, and and we'll talk about how that works. Yeah, is is an incredible story in Samuel seven, uh, where the Israelites are fighting off these enemies, right? And uh, and the enemies are called the Philistines, and. What and, and, and obviously the Philistines were really, really powerful as well. So they came against the Israelites and, and they were going into battle. And Samuel the prophet does things God's way. So while they start to fight, Samuel does things God's way. He took a suckling lamb and he sacrificed it uh, right there, you know, uh, as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cries out to the Lord, proclaims the Lord's death. Right? These are just pictures of what Jesus would do. He cries out to the Lord on Israel's behalf and the Lord answers because the Lord thundered from heaven. It says that day, the Lord thundered from heaven against the Philistines, against the enemies and threw them into such a panic that they were driven away uh, before the Israelites. 
I love that. He, the Lord thundered from heaven against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic they were routed before the Israelites. Psalm 23 tells us beautifully, um, the Lord, he, he, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. So when do we take, the, when do we come to the Lord's table? Psalm 23 tells us that the Lord prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So when do you go and, and take the communion? When do you take the bread and the cup? Anytime you know there, that your enemies are near. Whether it's an enemy of depression, whether it's something that's disturbing you, whether you're emotionally in turmoil, you bring out the bread and the cup. And the moment you proclaim the Lord's death and speak about his death, God will thunder from heaven and drive your enemies away and drive your enemies away. Um, the enemies we face today, we've learned to call them stress and, and you know, and, um, and, you know uh, and depression and we've named them, right? And of course, no one's saying that these uh, are not real, but don't focus on them. When these things come, do, your, do what God called you to do. God has given you, you know, given you a way for him to, to partake of his life. Remember the first verse, when you eat this bread and drink this cup, right? When you eat the flesh and drink the blood, you abide in Jesus. You're, you're resting in him. Um, you're going into your door and the, and, the, and the plague cannot touch you and death cannot touch you. I hope that these connections are blessing you, but that's what you're doing. Every time you're doing that, you abide in Jesus. You live in Christ, um, you know, and, and you have eternal life surging. So you have God life within you. God gave you his life. Um, let's quickly, I'm, I'm probably going to, to, to stop there and tell you about a, 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 testimony, a testimony of my own. And I would never um, do this except obviously if I was talking to you in person. So let's do it tonight. Before we, before we go into this, let's do it tonight. I never knew about the power of the Holy Communion until um, I experienced one of the most excruciating back injuries of my life. And I remember having this back injury for a whole year, being in China when I went through this, um, went to every doctor imaginable, tried Chinese medicine, acupuncture, um, you name it, Western medicine, just a whole bunch of doctors and treatments. And it was not just a back pain, my back would just crack uh, without any warning and I would be flat for about two weeks at this time my third child was born so I had two kids and our third child was born and she, and she was about four months um, or six months and uh, and I remember crying out to God saying you know you've given me kids you, you're not I, I can't believe uh, that you would leave me like this I'm I, you're so good I know you don't want to leave me like this I know this is not how you want to want me to see or, or want me to live life so I remember um, sitting in my hall in Singapore and at this time I'd started going and listening uh, to Pastor Prince and, New Cre and, and just listening to uh, him speak about the Holy Communion exactly like I, like I spoke to you. And I remember that I was listening to this message um, pretty much on the exact same verses I've given you, but just reinforcing that today, and, and I was watching a DVD in this hall where I'm speaking to you right now, right? In this hall, the same house. And I'm watching this DVD and I've been through a year of pain, right? And I'm sitting on this couch watching this, uh, this sermon. And he said, you don't have to take any pains today. No enemies can disturb you because Jesus himself took all your sicknesses and carried all your pains. Remember, we went through that yesterday, Isaiah. Is Isaiah. So I paused the DVD, I went into the kitchen, I brought out the bread and the cup. Or I brought out a bread, just a piece of bread and, and wine, an actual wine. So you can use actual wine too if you want, just a little bit. And I remember saying these words and, and, and Pastor Prince led us in this prayer. And that's the prayer I'm going to lead you into today as we take it. But I remember taking, uh, saying these words, you know, your body was broken so that mine could be healed. Surely you bore all my sickness and carried my pain. You bore this this year-long backache, you bore this pain. And, and before I'd done this, the doctors had told me, you, you will never exercise again. You're gonna walk, take a slow walk. These back pains happen to everybody uh, between the ages of 30, um, 33 to onwards. Most of the males in the world have this problem. Remember, the world may have problems. As a child of God, learn that you don't have to accept them. 
The world may be going through it. The world may be experiencing plague and disease. And I'm, and, and I'm not knocking it. I'm asking you to remember whose you are and whose child you are. Um, and, st- and, 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 and this is just a reminder for you. So um, the doctors actually said that to me. They said, look, about 60% of males actually, 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10 males at the, after the age of 30 have some sort of back problems. So you just have to manage it, manage the pain. You know, when it comes, just, you know, ease up on the exercise. Don't run, don't lift weights. And I was like, is this what life is going to be like? So here I am thinking about all this pain that's happened. And I said, surely you bore this pain on your own body at the cross. You were pierced and you were crushed. And with every stroke you took, that sickness was removed from my life because you paid for it. It says, by his stripes, we get healed. It said, um, surely he has borne all our sicknesses and carried our pains. He was pierced for our sins, crushed for our rebellion. The punishment for our peace was upon him. Remember that. The punishment for your well-being was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed or we are healed. And I said that and I ate the, and I ate the bread. Then I lifted up the cup and I'm following this on a DVD to a T, right? Uh, and Pastor Prince says, um, leads, is leading in communion. He said, the blood, and we've talked about the power of that blood. Every time you're raising this cup, you're speaking the blood on your doorposts, all right? This is how God sees it. God sees, God remembers what his son did. And you're just, every time you raise it, you are glorifying him. You're saying, I trust in you. I don't care about what the, what, what's happening outside. Yes, I can love them. I can take care of them. But I'm not caring about what the bad news is throwing at me. I'm doing things your way. And when, I, when you raise, so I raised the cup and I said, your, your blood has made me completely, has washed away all my sin. Remember, the blood has paid for your sins. It has washed it away of your entire life so you don't have to take any sickness. So I believe that. I said, this blood has removed all my sickness and my pain. It, it has removed all, uh, sorry, all my sin. So because I have no sin, I, you know, the blood covers me. Nothing has any power over me. Nothing bad can touch me. And I drank. And one year of pain left at that moment, sitting on this couch, at that moment, one year of pain left and never and never came back, and never came back. Um, what's What's incredible is I kept playing that DVD, and this DVD was probably about probably about ten years old. Uh, so 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 God has has control over space and time. God has no limits, my friend. Don't put God in your box. God is limitless. God is incredible. God can reach out into the past, present, and future, and He can save people. Don't put limits on God. God is awesome. Um, and and then and then you know. Pastor Prince kept speaking. He said, look, if that pain comes back, remember that when Jesus was on earth, he spoke and he said, pain, leave. You cannot be here. Uh, If that comes back, say it out loud. The righteousness of faith speaks. All the the incredible things we've been talking about so far. About a week later, I, I noticed this pain or this slight pain coming back as if, as if it was an, as if it was something crouching. When the enemy is near, what's happened? You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Get out the bread and cup and proclaim the death of Jesus. And God himself will thunder from heaven for you and scatter your enemies and throw them into confusion and give you the victory because every victory is done. Remember, Jesus says it is finished. You don't have to do anything today. You don't have to. And you can choose, my friends, whether you want to believe in in, in science and medication and all sorts of uh, of, of tools that are given to the world or you want to do things God's way. That is always a choice. I hope today has blessed you. I hope today has helped you. We've gone long, really long, but you know what? Don't care. If it's brought you, uh, if it's blessed you, then that's why we're doing this. Let's do this together, okay? Let's partake of the roasted lamb together. That was a type of Uh, And it says, they had the shadow, we have the substance. We have the actual body and blood of the finished work of Jesus. So join me, grab your bread, grab your cup, let's begin. Um, All right, tell me when you're ready, pop in a message saying ready, and let's go from there. We'll take an extra few minutes today. Good. Are you ready? And you can take with me as you want. All we gotta do is lift up the bread, Remember to see Jesus at that cross. Remember to picture that in your mind, that Jesus himself. Remember it says he was pierced. All right. How is bread made? Check this out. How is bread made? It is beaten. The dough is beaten. It is, it is pounded. And at that cross and before he 
when on that cross Jesus was pounded and slapped and beaten and crushed. He was pierced and crushed. He was crushed with your sin. He was crushed. He was, um, he was pierced. And by his stripes you were healed. How is, how is wine made? Or how is grape juice made? By the crushing of grapes. Grapes have to be crushed. Physically stamped on. Stomped on. Crushed. Jesus bled for you. Jesus was crushed. Jesus was striped. Uh, in the garden of Gethsemane. And actually the, the word Gethsemane means olive press. Where olives are crushed. And, uh, and someday, we'll, hopefully, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how the anointing oil or the olive oil that we use today as anointing oil is representative of the blood of Jesus. So it says that in Gethsemane, Jesus sweat drops of blood. Uh, hematidosis. Oh, man, I, I can't do this. But hematidrosis. Yes, hematidrosis is, an, is a condition where somebody's capillaries will burst and blood will mix with sweat. And at that moment... Jesus redeemed you. His blood is redeeming. His blood is forever. This is the blood of God. Don't, don't put that down. So when you're partaking, Jesus said, this is my blood. My blood is drink indeed. My body is food indeed. My blood is drink indeed. When you're partaking of the cup, right? Remember, this is his blood. That was, he was crushed for you. So the blood could be shed and wash all your sins, past, present, future. You have no sin today, my friend. You have no sin. A lot of people have told me, hey, can we just take communion? Can we just take bread and, and, and wine? Can I tell you something? Uh, Revelation has this incredible verse that you should never forget. It says, it says, to him who loves us and has washed us from our sins by his blood and freed us from our sins by his blood, has made us to be a king and priest to serve his God and Father. Wow, guys. You are a king and priest. Why are you waiting for a priest to give this to you? You are a priest. Jesus has made you a king and a priest by washing you in his own blood. You don't ever put down what God has done, what, what God has, has lifted up. Don't ever put that down. You have been made a king and priest. You can partake of this right away. You can partake of this. And, and remember, the, when you sense your enemies around, when you sense depression, when you sense pain, when you sense sickness, bring out the bread and the cup. Bring out the lamb. Bring out the roasted lamb and partake. And God will thunder from heaven and scatter your enemies. Let's do that together right now. It's been 32 minutes. Let's do it together. All you got to say is, Lord Jesus, thank you for your body. You can say this with me. Lord Jesus, I see you at the cross. I thank you for your body that was broken, crushed, pierced, and torn so that mine could be made whole. By your stripes, I have been completely healed from every condition. I receive right now your body given for me, filled with God life, divine life, wholeness, and peace. I receive it. I receive that health you paid for at the cross. I receive it in every part of my body right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Eat. Let's do this. Let's take the cup. And remember that blood, what you're holding is now the blood of Jesus shed on that cross. See him covered in blood that now covers your doorpost, that covers your head, that covers you. And proclaim it together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood that covers me. Nothing bad is allowed to happen to me. Your blood has set me free, has washed away all my sins has set me free from the power of sin and death and has made me righteous forever in your eyes. I receive your protection, your provision, your prosperity and your peace and all the blessings of Jesus, all the blessings of the righteous will now come on me and overtake me. I receive all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My friend Jesus said, take the meal and take it often. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. My friend Jesus said, do this as often as you do this. Do this to remember me. As often as you do this. How should we be partaking? As often as we can. As often as you can. As often as you want. 
love you, appreciate you. I think that's all the blessings we need tonight. But I just want to pray for you again. Father, we thank you for everybody listening here. And I pray that they would, that this revelation of communion would really drop into their hearts and be strong in their hearts as they are blessed by continually coming to you, partaking of the roasted lamb, the finished work of Jesus. Let their bodies be strengthened tonight as they partake. Let healing break forth, let miracles happen, Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, love you. Uh, thank you for all your time and for giving me a chance to speak this to you tonight. God bless you.